Good morning, everyone. Almost good afternoon, yes, but we're still hanging on to a few minutes of the morning. I'm Rebecca Newman. I'm the Vice President of Development and Communication here at the Salk Institute, and it's a great pleasure to welcome this Breathing and Sleep Symposium to the Salk Institute. This has been quite a while in the planning. A lot of energy has gone into this day, and I'm just thrilled to see so many of you here. Uh, you know, this institute is a very special place whose history is integrally interwoven with your histories. And ever since the institute was established in 1960, um, we have had a reputation for taking risk-taking science that led to the, the same risk-taking science that led to the development of the polio vaccine really formed the basis of the vision for the creation of this place, the Salk Institute. Jonah Salk's vision was to bring the world's top scientists here to work in a completely collaborative and unfettered atmosphere and to create a cauldron of creativity in basic biological research. And that faculty that he recruited was able to come here and to work in a facility that was as functional as it was extraordinarily beautiful, the iconic campus designed by the master architect and, and legend in the United States, Louis Kahn. And I think many of you had the opportunity earlier to walk about this campus and experience the magnificence of the Louis Kahn buildings and the way they function so beautifully for our, our faculty. The original focus of the institute was scientifically threefold, molecular biology and genetics, neurosciences, and plant biology. Fifty years later, our 59 faculty are making fundamental contributions to our understanding of Alzheimer's, aging, diabetes, and cardiovascular disorders by studying neuroscience, genetics, cell and plant biology, and they are driven by a belief in the power of curiosity, creativity, and problem-driven science, all of which are key to their incredible rate of discovery. This is a small place. 59 faculty oversee 870 individuals engaged in the scientific enterprise. We have 100 graduate students here, all of whom are from the University of California, San Diego, our neighbor right across the street. Salk is not a degree-granting institution, so these lucky 100 have the opportunity to pursue their, their doctoral studies here at the Salk Institute. We have 300 postdoctoral fellows who come from 55 countries around the world. So Jonas's vision of engaging the whole world in his scientific in enterprise has certainly come to pass. Our scientific foci has continually evolved in the last 50 years, and today it includes research on all aspects of molecular biology. In our neurosciences labs, we are decoding the brain and understanding the, me the mechanics of vision. We're discovering neuronal pathways, and our plant biology labs are working to develop genetically enhanced engineered crops for higher yields and <coughs> environmental adaptability. And you know these plant biology labs are, are more critical than ever in terms of the crisis of global warming that is, and the lack of arable land in the world. Many people don't realize that more people today die of hunger and starvation than of any other disease. And certainly the advances that are being made in our plant biology labs will go a long way toward, we hope, um, alleviating that issue. And in our stem cell research laboratories, we are discovering the means to reprogram cells to become induced pluripotent stem cells with the same capabilities of embryonic stem cells to perform specific functions that can lead to interventions and therapies for a myriad of diseases. Our faculty at the Salk Institute continually receive the highest honors. For a small faculty, it's absolutely extraordinary that 15 members are members of the National Academy of Sciences and we have eight Howard Hughes medical investigators working among our faculty. And just recently, we were cited by Science Watch, a barometer of the impact of publications on the scientific world as being number one in the world in neurosciences and behavior, and number two in the world in biology and genetics. I want to share with you for just a couple of minutes some of the recent discoveries that exemplify just how extraordinary the research and the faculty at the Salk Institute are. Recently, researchers led by Joe Ecker, the director of our Genomics Analysis Laboratory, provided the first detailed map of the epigenome, the layer of genetic control beyond the regulation inherent in the sequences of the genes themselves. The emergence of the field of epigenomics has changed the way researchers think about how diseases like cancer evolve and how physicians should treat them in the future. 
Researchers in the lab of Ron Evans have discovered a master metabolic switch, which when thrown, allows nutrients to alter the rhythm of our peripheral clocks. This discovery provides a better understanding of how nutrition and gene expression are linked, leading to new ways to treat obesity, diabetes, and related diseases. Recently, the National Institutes of Health, through the National Eye Institute, chose Salk for a national basic research center focused on vision. This is the first such center to be established in a decade. Led by Professor Thomas Albright, the center will take a broad-based approach to understanding the development and plasticity of the visual system, the mechanisms of the neural processing of visual stimuli, and the link between visual perception and behavior. And finally, in research that has just been declared one of the top discoveries of 2009 by Discovery Magazine, stem cell scientist Professor Juan Carlos Belmonte corrected a defective gene in cells taken from patients with Fanconia anemia, a disease that leads to bone marrow failure and leukemia. Dr. Belmonte took hair or skin cells, followed a series of steps developed in the labs of a colleague, Professor Inderverma, and he then corrected a, a gene defect and reprogrammed the cells into induced pluripotent stem cells with the ability to act as healthy embryonic stem cells. So these are just a, a little slice of some of the extraordinary stories that come out of the Salk Institute every week. And I hope that you're all proud of the kind of scientific advance that takes place here on a daily basis that emanated out of the vision of Jonas Salk. Before I close, I want to thank a few people. First of all, our most generous sponsors, ResMed uh, and its wonderful CEO, Peter Farrell, who I think was here for a few minutes earlier. He may not still be here. And also the director of Peter's uh, ResMed Foundation, Fiona Tudor. And certainly the Estancia Hotel, General Manager Gordon Mitchell, who graciously has underwritten the rooms for our out-of-town speakers. Also, I have to thank the most energetic and dedicated planning committee, Gladys Swensrud, Rick Vanderlinden, and Judith Fisher. <laughs> and I have to throw a few bouquets to my own team. Uh, Cheryl Dean, our Senior Director of Plan Giving, has been the point person for this event. Susan Treback, our Su Senior Director of Communications, who, by the way, it's Susan's team that developed the fantastic public website, poliotoday.org. If you haven't gone on it, you should, because it's truly fabulous. And Carol Noska and, in and Inger Johnson, who run all the events here at the Salk and are an integral part of every event that we have here. Mm -hmm.